where is Dragon Ball Super? And why is it that instead of us getting new episodes of Dragon Ball Super, that they're gonna be doing a new show, Dragon Ball Daima? A question that has been asked multiple times and even more so now. Why is the decision being made from the Japanese offices to focus on a new show and not continue Dragon Ball Super? By the end of this video, you will have complete knowledge about what happened behind the scenes and why they're going in this direction. And even if you don't agree with it, which I certainly have my reservations, I'm not sure if I were in charge that I would have done this, to be honest with you. But at the very least, you'll have a better understanding of why things are the way they are. And I'll be giving you tons of exclusive behind the scenes information, things I've been told and gathered from various different places, both public and private, all will be answered today. For a limited time, everything is now 30% off on the Geekdom 101 store. Whether you want a shirt, hoodie, a print, whatever you'd like, all of our designs, including the then, now, and forever Gohan design. This is the hoodie variety. You can also get a shirt. Here is the vintage Super Mario Brothers 3 Kid Goku shirt that we put out a couple years ago. 30% off sale on everything in the store. I'll leave a link down below to the Gohan merch and then when you get there just click on the store my name and you'll have access to everything limited time now company-wide 30 percent off first of all i want to say that i understand why people want dragon ball super back because we have a few arcs in the manga that never got anime adaptations and whether or not you liked or disliked them there's a curiosity there about what the anime would do with hype scenes like Ultra Ego Vegeta, Force Spirit Vision, Moro's Great Abilities. I get all that. I want to let you know that with this video, the main thing you're going to know by the end of it is you're going to find out where is the Dragon Ball Super anime and why are we getting Dragon Ball Daima instead. Please watch the video to the very, very end so that you have all of the information. I'm going to be very, very direct with what I say. And please understand that a lot of this information is secondhand information. I do not work directly for any of these companies. This is information that was given to me. And at some point, if I speculate, I will tell you it is speculation. So let's go ahead and get to it. Why is Dragon Ball Daima the next big anime project? And why did they choose to do that as opposed to bringing Dragon Ball Super back and continuing where we left off after the Termina Power? The easy way to say it in a one-word answer would be Shueisha. That's it, Shueisha. And I'm going to go into exactly what I mean by that. First of all, Shueisha is the publisher of Jump Magazine. And Shueisha is the company that has kind of been the figurehead for Dragon Ball from the very beginning, along with a lot of other shonen properties. Toriyama has worked with Shueisha since the very late 70s, and they have published his works in their various magazines. Shueisha is sort of like the Marvel or DC Comics of Japan. You understand it's the biggest comic book manga company over there and they have clout over Dragon Ball even above Toei Animation. I did a stream a few months ago where I discussed the actual structure behind how Dragon Ball works and even though Akira Toriyama and Bird Studios which is his company are the company that controls the characters and the original creator is him, Shueisha ultimately decides where things go. Shueisha works with Bandai for the video games and works with Toei Animation to produce the Dragon Ball anime. But ultimately, the primary reason as to why Dragon Ball Super has not come back is Shueisha. And there's tons of evidence out there for this. First and foremost, I want to tell you that even before the Dragon Ball Super anime ended, Toyo Toro did an interview sometime around 2017 where he discussed that at some point the manga will catch up to the anime and go past it. So he already knew the anime wasn't going to last forever. And it's also a situation where at that time, if you remember, the manga was behind the anime. We were already in the T.O.P. arc, but the manga was still in the Future Trunks arc. And that's because the manga is published monthly as opposed to weekly like a lot of other manga are published in weekly shonen jump dragon ball super is a v jump property so what wound up happening was in 2018 when dragon ball super ended the very next project they put their focus on animation wise 
was Dragon Ball Super Broly. They had already been working on this for about a year, and then Broly came out, and if you remember, shortly after that, the information started to get out that Dragon Ball Super may be coming back in 2019. This was a huge story at the time, and there were a number of people who had confirmed that this is indeed the plan, that Super was supposed to come back in the summer of 2019, taking back the time slot that Kigigi no Kitaro took from Super in 2018. However, as many of you remember, and of course, many of you have reminded me multiple times since 2019, Dragon Ball Super did not come back. At that point, they decided to go ahead and do another year of Kitaro, followed by Digimon 2020. And I think as of right now, Digimon is still running in that time slot. There's a few different factors going on here. First of all, the idea of Dragon Ball Super being scheduled to come back in 2019, that whole story was a legitimate story. That was a legitimate inside rumor that got out. And ultimately, now in 2023, we've discovered what really happened to Dragon Ball Super in 2019. There were a number of different people on the production staff, which I did show screenshots of conversations with these people, blacking out their names to protect them, and they all discussed Super's imminent return. One of the big revelations of 2023 was the fact that there's been a power struggle behind the scenes in the Dragon Ball room and Shueisha, and actually it had been going on for a number of years. Now, like I said earlier in this video, I'm not there, I don't work out of the Japanese studio, so I don't know the exact details of this power struggle, but I'm gonna tell you what I do know and what I suspect. Akio Ioku, the head of the Dragon Ball room, Toriyama's right-hand man, one of the most important figures in modern Dragon Ball, he was one of the primary players that was pushing for Dragon Ball Super to come back in 2019. I have a personal friend of mine who spoke to Akio and had lunch with him and another producer, and the topic of Dragon Ball Super was brought up. On top of that, there were multiple different people saying it was true. Could all these sources have been lying? Could this have all been just a made-up thing? Not exactly. One of the pieces of information that was not true about Super back then is that Super was supposedly in pre-production. That is not the case. Dragon Ball Super was not in pre-production. What was going on was Akio Yoku was under the assumption based on him pushing for it that Dragon Ball Super would be coming back in 2019. But he hit a roadblock and that roadblock was Shueisha. Ultimately, his bosses. Even though Akio Yoku is a very important editor for Shueisha and a, the head of the Dragon Ball room, I mean, he's literally the number two guy behind Toriyama, Shueisha had other plans. From what I understand, based on statements made by Toyotaro and other sources, Shueisha did not want Dragon Ball Super to resume on television because they wanted the manga to get ahead of Dragon Ball Super. They wanted more manga arcs. They wanted the fandom to shift their focus on buying issues of V-Jump every month and reading it online so that they can get clicks and you know purchases and make money without the anime being there and easily going ahead of the manga story and then the manga kind of becomes a bit more obsolete if there's an anime running. So it was Shueisha that put the kibosh on Dragon Ball Super in 2019. They went with moving forward with the manga, and then of course, as you remember, we had the Moro arc, and then the Granola arc, and then the superhero movie was coming out in 2022, and that was followed by the Dragon Ball Super superhero manga adaptation that ran throughout all of 2023. Now, one of the things that I'm sure you're thinking about right now is, okay, well, Shueisha stopped Dragon Ball Super. What was the reason and why do they not go with just making Dragon Ball Super a seasonal anime or creating filler episodes? The reason why Shueisha chose not to have Dragon Ball Super air in that fashion is because Fuji Television does not want short-term contracts to be in that time slot. They want minimum one to two year contracts. What do I mean by that? I'll explain. When Dragon Ball Super was in that time slot, it aired for about three to four years in that time slot, Sunday mornings slash Saturday night for us in this hemisphere. After that, it was Kitaro. That was a two-year anime. After that, we've got Digimon. That's still there. Listen to what I'm saying here. 
You may not agree with this, and I certainly don't, but this is the mentality of Japan. They don't think the same way we do. Their perspective is, if Dragon Ball Super was going to air on Fuji Television, they wanted a commitment of at least a year and a half or two years. And if they were to adapt the Moro and Granola arcs, logistically, unless you throw in a bunch of filler, you're going to end up with about 50 episodes, which isn't even a full year. So rather than do that... Fuji Television shifted the direction into doing other shows that are popular from the past, like Kitaro's modern show and, of course, the new Digimon, which is supposed to be a tribute to the old Digimon. So that is literally why Dragon Ball Super is not airing seasonal. Plus, understand that unlike other anime, Dragon Ball has never been seasonal in Japan. Dr. Slump in Japan started in 1981 and ran all the way until 1986, five years. That was replaced by Dragon Ball, which was replaced by Dragon Ball Z, and then GT, and then the 97 Dr. Slump took over. So Toriyama owned that time slot for over a decade. Actually, about two decades when you think about it, almost two decades. So... Fuji TV likes being sure of there being a lot of episodes that are already ready to go. And Shueisha does not feel that there is enough content in the manga yet to properly adapt it. Do I think that's a dumb move? I kind of do, but I also feel like if Fuji Television is the company that doesn't want seasonal episodes, that's kind of on them. You understand what I'm saying? So instead... This combination of factors led to Dragon Ball shifting its focus on being a manga-exclusive story with some movies coming out that Toriyama was a part of, and that's what led to Dragon Ball Super Superhero in 2022. That brings us to Dragon Ball Daima. At this point here, as we begin to close out 2023, there's still are not enough episodes to justify bringing Dragon Ball Super back to adapt the Moro, Granola, and even the Superhero and Broly movies. There's just not enough content there. And Shueisha is very cautious of putting too much filler. Shueisha and Toei are both very aware of filler being looked at negatively by a lot of fans. Look at Dragon Ball Kai. Dragon Ball Kai existed to be a anniversary series celebrating Dragon Ball Z 20 years later, but it also shaved off a lot of the filler because they understand that filler has a negative sort of opinion. A lot of anime fans don't like filler. The idea here is that Dragon Ball Super is not going to be ready to be an anime until there is more manga content for them to adapt. End of story. The arcs that we have now, according to Shueisha, is not enough. However... When it comes to Dragon Ball Daima, what's the story behind that? Well, as we broke here on the channel a few weeks ago, Dragon Ball Daima was originally called Dragon Ball Magic, and it was basically supposed to be an anniversary series celebrating 40 years of Dragon Ball going all the way back to 1984 when the manga began. And that's what Daima is. Shueisha has been cautious of making Dragon Ball Super. However, Akio Yoku is now involved still with Dragon Ball as a parent by the fact that he was at New York Comic Con and a story came out late in the summer of 2023 where we found out directly from a Japanese magazine that there was and still is a power struggle. Akio feels like Shueisha's dragging their feet when it comes to putting out Dragon Ball stuff and Shueisha does it really feel like putting out Dragon Ball stuff as urgently as Akio wants to? That's been a major issue. So what happened? Akio created Capsule Corp Tokyo, which is a new company that is supposed to handle Dragon Ball Super and Dragon Ball overall video games and anime. Akio was at New York Comic Con. That tells me that he still is in good favor with Toriyama and with Shueisha despite the power struggle. But one thing we do not know as of the creation of this video is has Capsule Corp Tokyo officially taken over Dragon Ball's anime and video games? We don't have an answer yet. And when we do, I'll make a video on it. So Dragon Ball Magic slash Dragon Ball Daima is a project that Toriyama was very excited about. He wanted to be a part of it, unlike Super, because he wants to make sure that this series was special. He wants to make sure that this series was more inclined with his image. 
And it was at this point they decided, instead of putting Dragon Ball Daima on the regular time slot that Digimon is on right now, the Dragon Ball Super time slot, they're going to do what a lot of other people have done, and that is shift over to streaming. It's a new venture, somewhat new for them, but it is something new for Dragon Ball. We've never had a streaming series before that started off streaming. Every Dragon Ball show aired on TV first before you had your crunchy rolls and things like that. One thing I want to make clear is that Dragon Ball Daima's existence is not slowing down Dragon Ball Super being an anime. That has nothing to do with it. Basically, Shueisha wants more story to be covered in the manga before it can become an anime. I do not agree with this strategy. I feel like it would be better served if they slowed the pace down and just adapted Moro so we can finally move on with the story anime-wise. But unfortunately... I'm not the boss, I'm not involved, you guys aren't involved, and no matter how much you can scream at Shueisha or at Toei on social media, they just don't care. They're going to do whatever they want, and the good news though is that Dragon Ball Daima has a lot of tender love and care put into it. You've got the Broly animators, tons of production people, Kubota's involved, Nakatsuru's involved. Some of the tippy top people in the industry are working on Daima to make sure that it does not have the same mistakes that Dragon Ball Super had. You're not going to get an episode 5 super train wreck with this show. Every episode will look as good as it possibly can and will be a lot of fun based on everything that we have heard. It's not what a lot of people wanted, but until Shueisha feels comfortable with allowing Dragon Ball Super to be an anime again, remember, they have power over Toei, that is when we'll see Dragon Ball Super again, whenever that day may be. I want you to understand, though, and please remember this, at this time, there aren't any plans to work on Dragon Ball Super's moral arc. Right now, the entire focus of the Japanese studio is to do Dragon Ball Daima. There's no movie coming out in 2024. That project has been has had no updates to it. Dragon Ball Daima is literally what they are completely focused on right now. And if your question is, when can we expect Dragon Ball Super to be an anime once again? The reality of the situation is Daima's coming first. And that's just the way it is. I would not wait for Dragon Ball Super anymore. I'm telling you this. I've been saying it since 2020. And I'm saying it again. Stop waiting for Dragon Ball Super. When the time comes, it'll come. But if you're going to sit there and be upset every time it doesn't get announced, it's not going to do anything for you, for me, or for them. It's just not going to happen. I am also worried about Nozawa's age and things like that that I'm sure you guys have thought about. You know, how long is this really going to go for? Which is why I'm telling you the best thing to do is try to give Dragon Ball Daima a shot. You may like it, you may not like it. We will see how it goes. But in the meantime, that's what we have. That's what we've got. And the Dragon Ball Super manga will continue being published in V-Jump. So we're going to have the Super manga to read as well as the Daima anime to watch as we approach the 40th anniversary of Dragon Ball. So that is the entire story. Share this video out with anybody who may be confused. That's the entire true story. I am not going to speculate on a date for Super coming back again. I'm just not doing it because right now Daima is the focus and whether we get more Super movie or anime, that's gonna be down the road. Thank you for watching.